your girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you for tuning in. We're going to talk about married at first sight. I got a little bit of time to come and chat with you guys. Today's my off day, so that's why I'm over here at the house chilling with my little robe on. Okay, I ain't got shit to do, so I'm over here chilling on the couch. But I was able to catch up on Married at First Sight and watch the first part of the reunion. And let me tell you, things, there's some things that shocked me. This Mirla and Gil situation, I saw it coming, but didn't. I saw it coming, but not at the same time. And I'm going to tell you why when we get into the review. But nonetheless, if you're new to my channel, appreciate you for tuning in. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Everybody, make sure you follow my Instagram and Twitter. I got a new Instagram because my last one was hacked. I don't know what went on, you guys. I really do not know. So uh, make sure to follow my new Instagram, which is ggdoll underscore for real. Um, that's my new one. So make sure to go follow that one. I literally have to put all new pictures because all my pictures that were on my old Instagram, I don't have on my phone, you guys. So, like, there's nothing worse than music, losing, losing music and losing pictures. Two of the worst things, okay? But, like I said, we're going to get to Married at First Sight. So, let's go ahead and get into it because it was a pretty good reunion. So, we opened up with the first couple, which is Rosé, a.k.a. Um, Rachel and Jose. Um, we obviously, Kevin, he's the host. He's going back through their experience, basically talking about how these two were hot and heavy from the beginning. Rachel and Jose from the get-go was just all, you know, you know, smooching and stuff. And everything was all good. You know, he asked them, you know, how did you feel about doing Mary at first sight? You know, she's got, she's like, you know, I got everything that I asked for, you know, everything that I wanted in a person, you know, that was Jose. Um, you know, Jose said the same thing about Rachel and they played his, his clip from, you know, all the goddamn, um, you know, ask and want that he was asking, um, the, ex the experts, he had a long ass list of everything that he wanted, but I guess, you know, Rachel fulfills a little bit of that. Um, but, uh, you know, we have to, of course, talk about the big, the big event that happened between Rachel and Jose, which was the lock situation. So, of course, Kevin brings up, you know, everything was good, Jose, until you locked the door in your wife. Like, what's going on? And they play the footage back, and it's just as bad. Every time you watch it, it almost gets worse, if you ask me. Because it's like, bruh, first of all, you really talk to your wife like that. And second of all, you really lock your wife out, and you try to, you try to uh, hide it under the guise of, I'm just securing my property. Come on, Jose. You securing your property without your wife? That's what you're doing? You securing your, you securing your property, your home, your apartment without your wife. Okay. So, um, so of course, they got to talk about it. And Jose, a little bit, is still not trying to take accountability for that BS because he's like, well, you know, I told her I was sorry. You know, that was just such a, you know, hard incident for us to get through. But I'm just so glad that we were able to push through and Kevin was like, look, Jose, man to man, you locked your wife out. I not, that's not, you know, this, Kevin, that's not what really, really happened. You know, I, oh, see, he was like, Kevin, no, Kevin was like, Jose, you got back at your wife. You were still angry. So you kind of were like, I'm going to teach her a lesson. And that's how I feel. That's how I feel how everything was. And then he kept trying to babble around talking about, well, I mean, you know, I realized that, I mean, I probably blew the situation you know a lot more bigger than it probably should have been why you keep saying probably no you did blow the situation out of hand you did you know make it bigger than it was like don't probably nothing and then the way you talked to her was crazy um so Kevin it was you know he was like why would you even do something and he was like well you know um uh I you know I just had to I, I let my feelings get the best of me and then they played um, the part where um, where Rachel went back to him after, you know, getting locked out. And he was like, you still seem to feel the kind of be acting the same way in this old clip, which is where he was really low key, still not trying to admit that he fucked up. But he was in the middle of cooking a steak breakfast. So I guess he just felt like, bitch, you gonna get what you get. And so Jose finally sort of kind of was like, yeah, black and white, you know. I didn't mean to do it and, and in the back of your head basically what happened Jose was you like I'ma lock this door and if she just so happened 
if she saw if she just saw it happen to not be able to come back in that's a plus that's what the freak you did you were you keep trying to say well it wasn't my intention to lock out my wife but it was every intention for your wife not to be able to get back in we could play these games jose we could play these semantics jose it was every intention for you to be able to oh my wife's not gonna get back in though right so rachel caught herself trying to see both sides as she liked to say i can see both sides you know um and you know um but she and kevin was like rachel don't you do it she was like no he was wrong but you know we just really had to grow from that incident and you know we've definitely gotten past that so then they get to um you know if they're still together um and come to find out they broke up for a little bit i'm not surprised to me Jose and Rachel are like Virginia and Eric. Y'all remember Virginia and Eric, the young girl with the dog and Eric, the pilot, had all the red flags to not be together and still chose to be together. And now they were on couples cam and ended up getting a divorce like a year later. That's going to be Rachel and Jose. Because at the end of the day, Jose, his controlling factor, his like need to be right, his need, like he's not able to get out of his comfort zone, all of that shit like he really needs to work on um so then they talk about matter of fact you know um she was like yeah you know we weren't together and you know i moved back home because he got upset that i wasn't bringing my stuff in his house and she's like you know if, but that was my concern everything was his you know it didn't feel like home to me and that's my thing too like i would feel some type of way even though like okay we're deciding to stay married I don't like the idea of moving into your spot because if we ever were to get into an argument and you pull one of these, well, bitch, get your shit and get out, get out my house. Oh, we left eye in this hole. Okay, it's your house. Okay, see if your house gonna be here tomorrow. Like, I would never ever like give a man the opportunity to be like, basically kick me out of his shit. Like, no, uh-uh. But she ended up moving out and staying with her mom. Um... So, you know, they said that they're working on it. They're more working on getting back together than not being together. Um, Summer Rachel didn't help either. <laughs> you know, when Rachel's out of school, you know, it didn't help. Um, and then as well, uh, she said, luckily though, Jose is coming. He coming up off that money on the trips. And that actually explains why he kept saying, you know, no to the trips. Because when he goes on trips, he balls out, but Rachel, she's more budget friendly on the trip. So maybe that kind of makes more sense why he was like, you know, like, well, let's just go, you know, to San Antonio. And it's like, bitch, that's not a trip. He likes to go stay at $1,400, you know, a night hotels. And it's like, no, we can stay at the $100 a night hotel. That, that sound more right, you know? Um but they are actually planning some trips and as of right now they're working on getting back together so that's Rachel and Jose moving on to Brett and Ryan um Brett and Ryan you know wasn't nothing going on with them since the beginning they were struggling having chemistry together they had that one moment at the honeymoon that they you know kind of had a little bit of a spark but the minute they got home that shit went into the trash um so we all know the obviously the situation with their chemistry not growing and you know having to figure out okay how do I get outside of the fact that oh I'm not his type I'm not his type everybody's telling me I'm not his type and she's like obviously you know I heard that a lot it's not that it bothered me but it's just kind of like okay like how do I get around this the fact that he's not attracted to me or I'm not his type um and so it's kind of hard to do that. Like, and you're not her type either. So it's still something you work on though, because that's what you wanted. But for Ryan, his type, it, like that's important to him. He does not see the other valuable qualities, which your family clearly has been telling you about because they called his ex-girlfriend's potato sacks. Like clearly, yes, yeah, she might look good, but her energy, her vibe, her, like whoever she is, is not right for the family or you. Or your ass wouldn't still be single right now. Clearly, your type isn't working, Ryan. Um, but, you know, they end up talking, uh, bringing the sister out. And the sister talks about how, you know, she felt bad about kind of throwing at, um, throwing at Brett that he possibly could have been talking to somebody else. She was like, just for my brother's history, you know, that's just something I assume that happens. 
but you know I you know I kind of regret doing that um so then they get to talking about obviously you know text gates and uh, because the sister, um, what was it? What was it? Uh, Kevin had asked the sister, well, do you think, you know, Brett's the type of girl for, for Ryan? And she was like, yeah, you know, she was, you know, she definitely had, you know, the, you know, the personality all that. Like Brett is what Ryan needs, but not where Ryan, Ryan wants. That's kind of the, the hard thing about, you know, relationships, figuring out, damn, this is what I want over here. It look good. You know, I know it's going to have some bomb D or I know it's going to like, I know this is what I want. This is my type, but the shit always ends up bursting up in flames. Or do I go, you know, over here where it's like, I need this, right? Basically, the, the we having a future versus Russell debate. This is what I want, but I know this is what I need. Brett is what Ryan needs, but he keeps going for these potato sacks, which is what he wants. Um, but basically the sister was like, yeah, I thought Brett was the girl, you know, he needed until, and it's like, until what? And it's like, come to find out, they said Brett was talking to somebody on the side. And it's like, wait a minute, Brett, you talking to somebody else? You didn't let nobody know? What? So yeah, apparently Brett had got this number. She said she wasn't texting old dude. She was like, yeah, we, you know, we text a little bit, but you know, nothing like not actually initiating something. So then the sister, they end up, you know, letting the sister go. But then, um, you know, kind of, no, no, the sister was still there. Basically, they looking at Brett with like, well, ain't that kind of the pot calling the kettle black that you got on him from, you know, da downloading the app and you were messaging somebody? And I'm kind of like, I get what happened. I get what Brett was doing. Brett got old dude's number because it's like, if I'm going, I don't know if I'm going to see this man again. But even though I'm married, this shit don't look like it's working out. So I'm going to keep this number, you know, and just text, you know, hi and bye to make sure to keep that warm. So when I do leave this, I can just, you know, pick up right there. That's what Brett was doing to me. But um, these two basically end up on good terms. You know, they didn't leave together and they basically are friends and you know it's just it was just kind of like one of those things she said because they weren't really emotionally invested there was no reason to have a hard like a hard or like abrasive or you know ugly you know split like to them it was just kind of like well you do you I do me and we'll go forward um are y'all mad at Brent though for getting a number and trying to you know get mad at Ryan Ryan's was just a little bit more shady like the way Ryan did it was just a little bit more like completely irresponsible and like I low-key am mad that they didn't like really dig into that a little bit more about the fact that like bruh like what were you thinking when you did download the app you know when you matched with the person like there were so many more questions they could have asked Ryan about that app situation but I think they wanted to focus on Brett more because that was T um so yeah basically they're friends so the next couple, um, who was after that? Mirla and Gil. Now Mirla and Gil, y'all. So we know the story of Mirla and Gil, the patience that man had to have. Um, y'all see the fact that he had on them red bottoms? Because Kevin was like, you know, kind of looked like Mirla might have, you know, brought you to the dark side. You know, what kind of shoes was them? He's like, oh, you know, I don't know, Kevin. And he like kicked his foot up. And you saw the red bottoms. And it's like, I don't think that Gil don't like my stuff. He just don't doesn't need it as much as Mirla. Or, you know, he low-key does like the, not, the nice stuff, but just got to get his paycheck up to it. Like, I don't think, like, the lifestyle that Mirla was living isn't the type that Gil would appreciate, but he don't necessarily need. You know, you can like something all day, but that doesn't mean you need it. But for Mirla, she almost comes across like as if she needs the nice li lifestyle. Um, but nonetheless, Gil, he looked good. Did y'all like the beard on him? I, I I, don't know how much I like the beard on him, you guys. Like, it, I don't know. May, it, I don't know. Like, maybe had he more done like, uh, had he done more of like a like shadow, like five o'clock shadow instead of like the full beard. Had it just been like, you know, just a little something, something, I feel like to me that would have been a look a little bit better. But that's just me. What y'all think? Um, Mirla and Gil. Basically, 
it was slow go, you know, slow to the kiss, slow to, you know, the sex, slow to, you know, the chemistry, but ultimately they decided to be together. Um, and from the get go, you know, they talked about how, you know, Gil had to be patient and, you know, putting up with somebody who can be a Debbie Downer. Um, but he did it all for the sake of, you know, marriage. And for Mirla, you know, her thing was obviously the financial stability, but, um, you know, this is where Mirla lost me. And I know that I know Mirla's type because it's, I've kind of had them ways. I, I call it the Black Widow effect, right? The Black Widow, you know, some spiders, the male comes, you mate, and then you bite their head off. Praying mantis do the same thing too. Um, Mirla is what we call a Black Widow. Um, and she became a Black Widow because she's scared to love Gil, knowing that their lives are so different. She does not trust herself to fall for a man who might not be able to provide the lifestyle that she wants. Um, we come to find out that Mirla and Gil no longer are together. Kevin was like, us, we're just kind of like, what? Like, what do you mean y'all aren't together? They're not together. Basically, Gil got his heart broke. He put in all that damn work with her. And, you know, they finally got to actually to the point of having sex. And basically, Mirla was like, mm, you know what? never mind like this was cute and all but never mind um and so Kevin's like wait what happened oh first of all Marilyn's shoes were fly those those boots were so sexy and she looked way better in the face the decision day and she probably saw that shit and was like I'm not don't don't I, uh nice fresh face you know eyelashes like it was that's that's the type of face you have to keep Marilyn because that ass shadow was not for the glory of the kingdom but nonetheless, Mirla broke up with Gil and of course Kevin asked why and she was like, for me, I wanted a man with financial stability. And Gil and Kevin's like, wait a minute, Gil got a job and what I'm sure with a pension, he's like, a great pension. Uh, and so um, then she's like, well, you know, like for there's certain things or characteristics in relationship that I want. And yeah, you know, I build it on, you know, I want to build it up on a good foundation of friendship and not just sex, you know, and things like that. But you know, the things that are important to me are, you know, that. And so Gil, he had to let it be known, bitch. I make a hundred dollars more every, every two weeks than you. I said, Gil, that might be true. But overall, that overall salary mm, is still twice, it's still two times of yours okay I he tried to throw that little prompt that little punch in there like bitch you ain't gonna tell me I don't make no money but um sorry y'all my Eddie just kicked in my Eddie bull just kicked in You know, sometimes you forget, like, when you take one, when you take a, like, an edible, you forget sometimes because it takes usually about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on which one you have. But that's what just happened. <laughs> okay, so let's try to finish this one, y'all. We gonna get through this, all right? So, uh, who, Lord, y'all pray for me? That kind of threw me off guard. Um, I was talking about Gil. So Gil, he basically kind of find out, sold all his shit. He said, Kevin, I went to everything all the way down to the dog, a blender in his clothes, y'all. And even after that, Mirla was like, mm, never mind. Mirla, I, I get you trying to convey that, you know, you good and you really wasn't, you weren't, you didn't love Gil and you really were never into him from the beginning. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't buy that. I truly do not buy that. The way Marilla started off so off and then you, you can tell like when somebody's body is saying yes, but their mind is saying no. And that is her energy to me still says she is looking for that honest interest from somebody but to her that finance that money aspect of it is so important she's more 
she Marla is thinking more with her head than her heart to her I just really feel like she's saying she's thinking to herself girl if you fall in love with this man think how hard it's going to be in the future like when you have kids is he going to be able to afford the things that you want for the kids you know what if I want them to go to private school can he afford the private school like I know that's what was going through Marla's head and I think that made her feel feel scared to fall in love with him or to even get her feelings even more involved because the way she cried over that man and the way she like how are you not into somebody and like you had sex later on down the line so that whole time you knew like you don't have, like something was there for Mila like am I tripping do y'all think the same or am I just tripping I think I think Marla is about to head fuck herself out of a good situation because she's going to go back to that guy that might have the same amount of money as her, if not more. And he's not going to be able to give you that emotional connection that you had with Gil. I'm sorry. And Gil got his heart broke. And Kevin was like, you going to be okay? He was like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm not doing okay. Um, and he asked Mirla, you doing good? She's like, yeah, I'm good. You know, I'm fabulous. And it was kind of like, damn, like this man just told you he sold everything but his dog. You talking about I'm fabulous. So, um, um, yeah. So for Gil, he's like, you know, I'm not going to lie. It's, it, you know, I, I still love her. And he still to this day calls her his wife. Um, but Mirla was too... Even she didn't even get one and get involved in the argument with Gil because she, uh, he kept talking about, you know, what happened. And she's like, that's not what happened. He's like, it's not. Do you? I feel like Mirla did him a little dirty. y'all. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. You knew you didn't want this man. But then also he he said, too, he was like, she said, she's never mind. Now that I thought about it, he, she said, you know, I'm not attracted to you. He's like, my dumb ass stayed. <laughs> The way he said it, you could tell his feelings was hurt. You know, my dumb ass stayed. I was like, damn, Gil, you can see it. It's written all over your face that your damn feelings is hurt. But like Kevin said, nigga, you got a long line of your DMs. That pain gonna be over soon. You know, take, he's like, I'm in therapy. I'm glad he's in therapy. And you know, he's a black man who could do that. Um, and just, just, just get it together. Just get it together, Gil. It'll be all right. So we do a little segment with the guys. It wasn't nothing much. They all just talked about what they expected of each couple. Um, they were all shocked to see that Gil um, and Mirla were not together. Um, then they talk about the little bromance with Jose and Johnny. You know, we all know that little bromance going on. Um, and overall, their lesson, you know, coming into, you know, the experiment, they all have a relationship with each other. And, you know, Zach learned, you know, to compromise and all those things as a perfectionist don't work like this. Um, and uh, Gil had admitted that he has never had an insecurity about, you know, dating somebody. But now he does. Like, feeling like the person truly, like, has the same feelings. Like, that's not going to be an insecurity of his. Um yeah Gil Loki kind of went off he was like oh because I don't make as much money as you she was like don't project your insecurities onto me Gil it bothers you a little bit more than you like to admit I do think that I do think that it does bother him a little bit that that's what it was that probably made her decide to change her mind but so we get to the last couple Michaela and Zach and Michaela come out there looking like a hot little spicy salsa dancer from a telenovela. And Zach's nowhere to be found. Michaela decided she don't want to be on the stage with Zach. Kevin's like, you want to tell us why? She was like, I just can't have his energy around me. His presence, you know, I just want to protect my energy. You know, I'm like, bitch, your energy. Both of them. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Man, both of y'all's energy. Yikes. Um... Um, so she get to talking about the experiment. Of course, she was like, in the beginning, it was all good. She thought she found the love of her life. Um, and then that all changed. You know, there was constantly this back and forth of, 
oh, we're going to do it. We're going to make it better. You know, we know that argument, um, that argument, you know, made us better as a couple. I really still love you. Then we go from that to, I hate you, Jody. This is definitely baby. I love you, Jody. Please come back home to, I hate you, Jody. I never want to see you again. Go back to your mama house. Like that's basically what was going on between the two. So we start talking, Kevin's obviously asking questions about, you know, the relationship and where things went wrong. You know, she did take accountability for like her blow up. She said she texted, um, she said she texted him and apologized and, you know, said that going forward, um, that she would do better or whatever. And, you know, now there's this confusion because during the experiment it was okay we're gonna divorce but we're still gonna work on things we're gonna divorce but i don't want to be in a relationship with you but we can still work on things like zach i think zach got no he only got brothers i'm gonna say because if he got sisters this would be easy to like how are you not understanding this like what everybody's trying to say but nonetheless you know michaela you kind of played yourself she didn't want to talk to Zach, so the sister came out. Um, and, you know, she explains during the honeymoon, they had sex. They went back to the room, and they got it on. And she was like, but Zach said, oh, don't tell nobody. And Zach also said, um, if you tell somebody, I'm going to deny it. So, uh, sure enough, he did deny it. But nonetheless, you know, she's like, why would I hide it? Or like, why would I not, you know, why would I tell her? Why do you want me to hide it in the first place? She's like, it was those type of things that made it really hard for her to figure out Zach. And then, um, so she, so Kevin's like, do you feel like you got played? She's like, I also, I really feel like I got played. You know, he was like, but he's like, Michaela, the man, he was like, Michaela, the man told you no at the divorce. Like, what's going on? And that's how I feel. Everybody's like, Michaela, that doesn't make any sense what he's saying, but you knew that. You knew what he's saying don't make a goddamn lick of sense. But you went along with it because you wanted to, y'all wanted to, basically. Y'all know none of this makes sense, but y'all doing it because y'all want to, that's, that's what it is. You want to hop on and do a full split and look stupid. Um... And so she explains that after decision day, she's like, we had lunch and he invited me back to this crib. I stayed there for a whole week cooking and cleaning it, cooking and cleaning the fucking and sucking, like doing all of that and playing house. <laughs> These niggas is out here being the baby. I just thought about it. I just thought about that. Oh my God. Michaela got, boy, Michaela. Look, these niggas will say anything to get the benefit out of you. It's the benefit of a woman feeling like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be with you, girl. And then she started doing all the things, cooking and cleaning, having sex, all of that stuff. Right. But then y'all want to come back and be like, well, you know what? Return to cinder. What the? What? <laughs> Ain't no returning nowhere. What? Um. So that's what happened to Michaela and Zach. He basically like was like, oh, you know. We cool, like, you know, we working on things, but I just, I don't really see you as my wife. Like, everything's going good, but I don't know if we're going to work, you know, in the long run. So it's like, what are you working on things with her for if you don't want to be with her? Like, you just want to keep her around. That's, all, that's literally all it is. And you keep doing these things because you know she's going to stay around. So, Michaela, although you want to, Kevin asked, did you get played? Bitch, you played yourself because you knew all this. But you still went ahead and went past your your in your intuition and step and kept messing with Zach because you felt like if I just own everything, you know, he'll stay. If I just, you know, apologize for this and that, he'll stay. But like she said, with Zach, he definitely was waiting for the other shoe to drop. He was waiting for another fight to break out or uh, Michaela to have another tantrum. But unfortunately, Michaela, bitch, you were having more and more tantrums. You were doing a bunch of stuff. So it was like, it was both of y'all, honestly. So as Michaela's out there talking. Zach is backstage talking about, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, are you really going to sit there and go out there and let her lie? When am I going to go out on stage? Like, and Michaela did not want him out there at all until eventually Kevin invites Zach to the stage and he starts going off talking about, I don't know what's so hard to understand. You know, y'all aren't trying to make me look like the bad guy. He, he kept trying to explain the shit like a way of, 
he, Kevin's like, do you, you do understand how this is confusing. You say no on decision day, but you tell her, but I still, I, 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 I want to be in a relationship with you, but we're just working on things. It's like, I don't want to be in a relationship, but I do want to be in a relationship. Like, which one is it? You're giving mixed signals. And he really kept trying to be like, Kevin, you're trying to make me look bad. Like, like, why are you trying to make it seem like it's my fault that things are like this? Or like, am I really, am I really that like, Am I really sounding that stupid? Yes, 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 you are. Sound incredibly stupid because Zach, Jesus, how do you not see like you're telling the girl you don't want her, but you're still doing the shit with her like the fuck? And so Michaela's back there listening to Zach. And so Kevin's like, OK, well, you know what? Forget it. Let's move on. Did y'all have sex on the honeymoon night? No, we didn't. And Michaela's back there. He would deny. He said he was going to deny it. And Kevin's like, y'all didn't do nothing. Y'all didn't even kiss. And he was like, no, we didn't even kiss. Zach. Now, Zach, this is grown people watching this damn show. You want us to believe that you and Michaela stayed in the room and didn't have sex? What bitch you hiding back there? Or, or, or this bot, this, this, or this thought just popped in my head. Were you already talking about and telling about that y'all weren't having sex? That could be another reason why. But he was getting upset, saying that nothing happened. So Michaela's like, uh-uh, I'm gonna clear this up. So she walks out there and Zach gets pissed off because he's like, uh-uh, y'all said she was gonna have her own time. This is what she wanted. Then, you know, I, then I'm going to have my own time. And then that's kind of where the episode ended. And honestly, this was crazy to see, like, the couples. This, that Merlin and Gil thing surprised me, but it didn't. It did, but it didn't. Because I knew exactly who Merlin was. But I felt like she was going to be able to push through it for the sake of love. But... <laughs> Marilla ain't no dumb girl. She that sake of love argument's been going around a lot more. Had you had you been noticing it? This marrying these ladies tell telling ladies to marry for the sake of love. <laughs> Don't do it, ladies. Like Portia said, wrong road, wrong road. <laughs> so um yeah, Marilla said I can't marry you for love. Um. And Zach, you playing, you playing games, bro. You playing. So next week, we're going to see how this, how it goes, y'all. Tell me how you feel about the reunion. Tell me how you feel about the mess between Michaela and Zach. Are you surprised by Mirla and Gil? Do you think uh, Rachel and Jose will last a little bit longer? Um, and what y'all think that Michaela, is she going to be able to show the text messages? She going to show the proof? I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure to follow my Instagram and Twitter, and I will catch you guys later. Bye.